Welcome to the AME Food Safety Show. I love that song because it talks about over the rainbow. There's something wonderful out there. We just need to find it. Today's topic in this segment, pharmaceuticals and tap water. Let's begin with our first slide. What I have found, and you see this comic, that when people who are on pharmaceutical medications have disposed of their outdated, unused, or unwanted pharmaceuticals, they drive them to the drain, and, or they flush them down the toilet. What's the challenge with that? I'll tell you what the challenge is. The challenge is that that pharmaceutical product will be filtered into our tap water in our municipalities. Very few have the capabilities of eliminating those pharmaceutical products. As I think about what that challenge is for everyone here, let me just outline that very few pharmaceuticals are 100% consumed in our human bodies. We do not use all of the pharmaceutical goods in our consumption. Most of it, 99 plus percent, will be washed down through your disposal processes of your urine, and it ends up in the tap water. If you don't believe it, it's a challenge, but I think you ought to think about it. What's happening to my pharmaceutical goods? I'm going to just look at something here real quick. Some people call them pharmaceuticals. Other people call them drugs. That cartoon is very illustrative of the issue of a person asking for tap water in a restaurant and the waitress responding that you need a prescription for drinking water. That's an interesting point, and we'll talk about it in the next segment. Next slide. Let's talk about what is actually in drinking water. What we see are human drugs and the waste from veterinary products or feed additives. That actually goes into the water as well. Let's talk about it. Excretion. We talked about that as human urine. Also, hard sewage or solid sewage, disposal, waste. That goes into, as well as, the excretives of the excretion of veterinary animals, primarily. If you live in Tulare County, a lot of cows should be the number one in the country as far as population of cows. That also gets put into our drinking water. Sometimes it goes straight to a well. But the bottom line is liquid will flow down into drinking water, which will then be recirculated and come out through the, either the soil in the contaminants or the surface water, out to a river, out to the ocean. Next slide. As we think about our drinking water cycle, you probably remember these from your school days, but what is the challenge? That everything that goes out will come back, and it will end up in the sewage system eventually and filtered and treated in whatever ways. Every municipality has a website. If you live here in the Central Valley, you live within the bounds of Fresno City, County, you will see that there are websites which show percentages from more than 300 tests that municipalities need to run. Unfortunately, none of the government agencies require testing for pharmaceutical products. Next slide. What is the major principal component of these pharmaceuticals that we're concerned about? Well, number one is estrogen. Look at that slide. Estrogen in drinking water could come from your home, could come from a factory, it could come from livestock like dairies, it could come from agriculture, or generally from waste because every time it rains, the runoff will go into a water source. So we look at wastewater from previous runs of the tap water. You're looking from groundwater, which, by the way, we're in a drought in the Central Valley, and it all gets mixed into tap water. What is an estrogen-type mimicker or an estrogen-type medication? We use them in many, many pharmaceutical products. If you watch television at all, you see the benefits, then you hear about the side effects, and then you're asked to see your doctor. What the challenge is is that the components of those pharmaceutical products do not get totally consumed. As you look at that bubble pack on the right-hand side, You'll see two bubble packs, and then you'll see a cream. All of them use those estrogen mimickers. And what are some of the side effects? You already know them. If you watch television, half the commercial is talking about headaches, nausea, vaginal discharges, weight gain, 
breast tenderness, spotting, all of those are primarily related to birth control type medications. But the fact I'm trying to get in into this discussion is that it all ends up in our drinking water. Next slide. What some authors have described this situation as unprescribed drugs in our water cycle. I think that's a very good description of what we have here. We have drinking water that's a composite of a lot of different sources. What we don't wash out, what does not get filtered or tested, is these estrogen mimickers. They do a lot of things to us, primarily looking at, in combination, we have no clue. I'll tell you about a study that I was involved in on the central coast of California. And what they found was in Los Angeles County that these estrogen mimickers were obviously being flushed down in the various ways we've discussed, but the fish were changing gender. They were going from male to female and from male to female, from female to male. That was unintentional. Those species of fish do not change but for a genetic modifier like estrogens. Next slide. So how can we remove them? This is a big issue. You can remove them, but most municipal water sources do not. This is one of the reasons you see in popular mag magazines and television programs about men who were manly at one point. Later in life, as these accumulations build up, you have to determine whether or not these estrogen mimickers had a role and them wanting to become females. They said, hell, my inner female is now coming out. They're cross-dressing, they're having surgeries, some of them are even requiring the state, that's us, to pay for it. You have to decide, do you want to take tap water, which may be potentially linked, even if it's small, minute amounts, with these estrogen mimickers and other pharmaceuticals, or do you prefer to purchase water which has been ozonated, ultraviolet light for disinfection and filters to keep out these chemicals that you do not want. And if you'll notice, many of our men now are becoming feminated, in other words, becoming more effeminate. I have been concerned about it, and it's in the public literature, and people are essentially aligning with that idea. Some people have fought that with household fil carbon filters. Carbon has a unique absorbent property which will absorb many of those chemicals. So what I'm saying to you is that you can either purchase water that has been filtered for these particular purposes. Some people call it bald water. Others, you can make your own home type filterization. Next slide. This chart on the right is particularly alarming to me because there was a study in 2008 looking specifically for these pharmaceutical products in tap water. Look at the red dots. Now you probably can't see them very well, but the issue is the ones with the green dots, which are very few, were municipal water sources which were tested specifically for these estrogen mimickers, and they were acceptable levels of zero. The red dots, on the other hand, were communities that really didn't test, didn't care, but this particular study by NBC News found and the AP as and NBC News, that these levels were unacceptable. So what I'm crying out to anyone listening to this particular program, this particular segment, is to take seriously the threat, the long-term threat, of the emasculation of our male population, the challenges that we're going to have physically, and the potential overdose if you're already on an estrogen type medication. I talked a couple of segments ago about the rapid and alarming increase in autism. I don't have any answers for you. What I do have is a suspicion that this may contribute to it. Next slide. These are my suggestions. The government, the federal government, people always wave a flag and say, oh, they can handle it, the CDC, the FDA, the EPA, the USDA, they'll help us. I don't believe in that, particularly in this issue, because why? They have no regulations. I'm not calling for regulation, but I'm saying you take care of yourself. Ever been in a boxing match? What does the referee tell you? Protect yourself at all times. I believe the same thing applies outside the ring. Check your local water agency's website and see what they're doing. 
you may even want to contact somebody there and make your voice heard. Are you screening for pharmaceuticals in your tap water? Some people call them estrogen mimickers. You may want to search on the Internet and find something out about it to see if I'm lying. Check to see if medical facilities in your area are dumping these uncontrolled releases of these medications that are now expired. It has happened. There are documented cases. Think about it. As you see those two graphics on the left, some people pour their medications right out into the toilet. Others will drink it and go through their system and filter out into the toilet. Here's the challenge. Do not flush pharmaceuticals down the toilet or the drain yourself. Many pharmaceutical companies, these drugstores, will have a methodology for you to return those medications which are unused for their disposal, and hopefully that will be an appropriate use. Here's what I'd like to say. I do believe that these unregistered, unmonitored disposals of these pharmaceutical goods are affecting our entire society. They do have challenges with reducing masculinity. They do have challenges with affecting your health. The purpose of this show is to alert the listenership to these challenges, to sensitize you. You need to research it on your own to see if Andy Marino's lying or if he's telling the truth or if he's just raising an issue that's not really that important. I believe that the maintenance of masculinity in our society is important, just like it was in the Roman Empire. Thank you very much. I look forward to the next segment.